I dubbed this macrochet because I was inspired by macrame wall hangings, but this is 100% crocheted, and I can't wait to show you how to make it today. Stay tuned! The first thing that you need to do is find a dowel rod. This one I purchased at Hobby Lobby for $1.29, and I had a friend cut it in half. I also found these little ends in a baggie near the dowel rods, and I think it makes it look nicer, but it's not necessary. Mine measures about 17 inches, so I think I want my wall hanging to measure about 12 inches. I'm going to use Burnett Homemaker deck for mine, but if I could do over, I'd use this cotton cord. Begin by making a chain in multiples of two that is 12 inches long. Then you're going to turn and work into the backbone of the chain. Skip the first chain and make a single crochet, chain one. You're going to skip the next stitch and make a single crochet in the next stitch, followed by a chain one. Skip the next chain, make a single crochet, followed by a chain one. Skip the next stitch and make a single crochet, chain one. You're going to do this all the way to the end. Here I am at the end. I'm going to chain one and turn. This is the linen stitch, and normally you would work in this hole right here. But instead, I'm going to work down into the foundation chain that I skipped. The reason is, is I don't want any gaps. I want this to have a nice clean look. This is considered a drop stitch, so I'm making a single crochet in the foundation row that we skipped. Chain one, go to the next chain one space. Work a drop stitch down in the foundation chain. Chain one, skip one. Make a single crochet drop stitch down in the foundation chain. Chain one, skip one. Make a single crochet down in the foundation chain. We're going to repeat this process. Chain one, skip one, to the end of the row. Here we are at the end, and make sure that you put your last single crochet not in the top of that single crochet, but in the chain one that you skipped at the very, very beginning. chain one loosely and turn. Now the linen stitch will be worked as usual. We will be placing our single crochet stitches in these chain one spaces here. So you will skip the single crochet and work into the chain one space. Make a single crochet, chain one, skip one. Single crochet, chain one, skip one single crochet, chain one, skip one. We are going to repeat that all the way across. And I do recommend that you count your single crochets when you are done and make sure that you have exactly half of the number of the chain that you started with. So here we are at the end. And I'm just going to show you one more time that you need to make sure that your last single crochet is in that chain one that you made before you turned this row. So chain one loosely. Every row you will be working back into it. Now you can see these chain one spaces even better. So you are going to just continue making the linen stitch in those chain one spaces. And all the way to the end, make sure that you don't skip that last chain one. You're going to do this until it measures approximately two inches in width. So here mine measures two inches or five centimeters. And I want this to be the pocket. So I'm going to make it a little more interesting. I'm going to add some mesh work. It will also help it go a little faster. I'll admit I'm impatient. So to make yours like mine, if you wish, you will need to chain two and turn. 
that will count as a stitch. So we are going to make a double crochet in the next stitch, which is the chain one space. Now you will chain two and skip two. And then you will make a double crochet in the next two stitches. Chain two, skip two, make two double crochet. Chain two, skip two, make one double crochet in the next two stitches. You're going to repeat this process all the way across. Chain two, skip two, make two, double crochet. All the way to the end. Your last double crochet will be in that chain one that you made before you turned. So I'm going to keep going. Chain two, turn, and place a double crochet in the top of the next double crochet. Chain two, put a double crochet in the top of the next two double crochet. Chain two, skip to the next double crochet, put a double crochet in the tops of those double crochet. This will create that mesh material that I was telling you about. So you'll keep doing this, chaining two and skipping to the next double crochet. You should have one double crochet in the top of each double crochet, all the way to the end. And at the end, you will place your last double crochet in the top of that chain two that you started with. I'm going to keep making this mesh for a total of five rows. So now I'm going to go back to the linen stitch, chain one and turn, skip your first stitch and make a single crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip one, make a single crochet. Note right there that that is actually a chain that I am working into. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet into that chain stitch. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. I'm going to repeat this process all the way across. So now I'm going to continue on making the linen stitch for the remainder of my project. I'm going to skip the first stitch and make a single crochet, chain one, skip to the next chain one space, work a single crochet, chain one, skip to the next chain one space, make a single crochet, chain one. I'm going to repeat that all the way across to the end of the row just like we did when we started the project. So I will continue making the linen stitch in rows until I get a piece that measures what I want. So here I have reached a satisfactory size. This is the pocket here and I will seam those sides down. And I am happy with it, so I think it will look good with the dowel rod with the size that it is. So I'm going to measure it for you and tell you where I stopped at. So it appears to measure about 21 and a half inches or about 55 centimeters. Realistically, you could make your pocket any size you want and the back part of the panel any size you want. You can keep going. 
I'm going to mark the sides with a stitch marker where I want them to be joined at. I'm going to repeat it to the other side. Now we'll begin to attach our wall panel to the dowel rod. Begin by chaining two and then turn your work so that the right side is facing you. Now we're going to basically slip stitch around the dowel rod. You want to start kind of where you want the panel to hang so that you don't have to manipulate it a lot later. So place the dowel rod between your working yarn and your hook and then just slip stitch. Now bring your working yarn and your hook forward and put your dowel rod to the back. This can be a little tricky. Just be patient. You're going to put your hook into the first stitch and draw up a loop. Then you're going to wrap your yarn around the back and over the top of the dowel rod. Yarn over and draw through both loops. I'm going to repeat this. Put your hook in the next stitch, draw up a loop, wrap your yarn around the back and over the top of the dowel rod. Yarn over, draw through both loops on your hook. I'm going to zoom out in a moment and show you exactly what I'm doing. Bring your yarn around the back and over the top, yarn over, draw through both loops. Put your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, take your yarn around the back and over the top of the dowel rod, yarn over, draw through both loops. I'm going to show you again. Take your yarn under and over the top. Yarn over, go through both loops. I'm going to zoom in again to make sure that you see what I'm doing in the stitches one more time. So put your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, take your yarn around the back and over the top, yarn over, go through both loops. I'm going to show you a few more times and then meet you at the end. This can be a bit challenging. Just work slowly and make sure that your tension is even so that the wall hanging doesn't hang lopsided. Here we are at the end. I'm just doing the last few stitches and I wanted to remind you that you definitely want to pay attention here so that you don't accidentally decrease. Make sure you put your last stitch in that chain one that you did before you turned the last row. It's very important that you don't miss that stitch. So you will just fasten off here and leave a tail to weave in later. Here you will see that it looks very nice. I may have to manipulate it just a little bit, but that looks really great. So now I'm going to attach the side seams here. You could do a whip stitch or a slip stitch, but I'm going to do single crochets. I'm going to start at the top of the front side of the panel where the pocket starts. 
Join with just a simple slip stitch. Chain one and make single crochets through both layers all the way down the side seam here. Pay careful attention that you are going through both layers and that your rows are lined up. Here it is done. Make sure you count your single crochets so that you can do the same amount on the other side. I'm going to keep the right side facing me for the other side of the seam. I'm going to carefully line up the rows. I'm going to keep it facing me so that the right side of the stitches are on the same side. So this time I will actually begin at the bottom of the pocket and work my way to the top of the pocket. Join with a slip stitch at the bottom of the pocket. Now you will chain one and make single crochets through both layers all the way to the top of the pocket. When you are finished with this side, you will want to count your single crochets and make sure you have the same amount on this side as you do the other side. I'm finished with this side of the pocket, so I'm going to fasten off, leaving myself a tail to weave in later. So here's what it should look like this far. My notebook fits nicely in this pocket. I like it. So I decided to add a row of slip stitches along the top of this pocket because it is too loose. And this will help draw it in and give it a nice finished look. If I could do over, I wouldn't have fastened off on my last seam. I would have chained one and turned and started slip stitching across the front pocket. I'm just going to keep doing it all the way across to cinch it in a bit and give it that nice look. You could do anything to embellish yours, but I'm going to add three tassels to the bottom of my pocket. I've evenly spaced them apart here. Since my panel is 12 inches, I put one in the dead center, and then I put them equally spaced apart about three inches. I took a piece of yarn about a foot long and I'm going to add it to the bottom around the three inch mark here. I have a smaller hook to help get into the stitches, but you could realistically use the hook you use to make this. So going from the bottom to the top, draw that yarn loop through, and essentially we're making a tassel here. So just grab those ends and pull it gently down. This will be how we attach our larger tassel. So for the middle one, I want it to be extra long. So I'm using a piece of cardboard that is six inches long. I wrapped it 30 times. Now I got these wooden beads in an assortment bucket. I'm going to measure it here so that you can see they are about 20 millimeters, maybe a little bit bigger. So take your smaller hook, put your wooden bead on the hook and draw those tails through. Because I want the center one to be the statement tassel, I'm going to put two 20 millimeter beads on it. Now bring those pieces apart and grab those 30 tassel ends that you wrapped around the cardboard. Fold it in half to find the center and place it between those two loops. I'm going to knot it to secure it several times. I'm going to add a piece around the top to cinch it in. I also used 
a piece of yarn about the same length as my tassel tails here. I'm going to tie it once in the front, and then I'm going to flip it over and knot it closed. I'm going to wait until I've had a chance to iron this tassel before I cut the ends even. I also want to wait until I've had the other two made to see where I want to cut. So I'm going to add beads to the other two and do the same exact process. Now I did move these tassels from 3 inches to 4 inches away from the center because I wanted it to be more visually appealing. So before I had them evenly spaced apart three inches. Now I've got them four inches from the middle tassel. I just feel like it looks better. So I'm going to show you the last tassel. That middle one I made using cardboard, but these smaller ones I'm going to use my hand. If you decide to use cardboard for these, it's approximately four inches. I'm also going to wrap my fingers 30 times. If I could do over, I might would have only done 25 times. My tassels were a bit too fat. I'm going to make these small tassels just like I made that big tassel. So here my tassels are basically done. I just have to make them look a little nicer. I'm going to run a warm iron over the top and then I'm going to cut them evenly at the bottom. This will be the last part of the tutorial. I'm going to add a wooden ring so that I can use it to hang it on my wall. You could realistically just tie string here, but I want it to look a little more fancy. So here I'm measuring the distance that I want. You can make it any length you want, but mine is about 10 inches. So I'm going to double that length. I'm gonna get my tape measure out and cut it to be about technically 20 inches in length. I'm gonna do that four times so that I have four strands that are 20 inches long. Now you are going to take two of those strands and put them together, matching the ends together. This just gives it a little more sturdiness. Fold it in half, and then we're going to attach it to the dowel rod as if we were attaching a tassel. Grab those ends and gently pull through. Now we're going to repeat it to the other side. Grab the other two and put them together, matching the ends and then folding them in half. Attach it on the other side. Now we're going to bring those together and join them at the wooden ring. Begin by gently taking the ends and knotting them upon themselves. Keep that knot open. Grab your wooden ring and slide the tails through. Now take those tails and finish putting it through as if you were finishing the knot. Gently pull down on the sides to cinch it closed. You don't want to do it too tightly yet because we're going to do one more step with it.
take those tails and slide them back through the wooden ring towards the front. I'm going to take these tails back through this knot here. So I'm going to grab a smaller hook to help me. Now grab those ends and pull them through. This is just going to secure even more so that when more weight is applied into the pocket, it doesn't fall down. Now you really want to cinch it tight. Make sure you're not grabbing those sides, just the tails, and cinch it very, very tight. I kind of like the look that the tails give here. So I'm just going to trim them a little bit, but I'm probably going to leave them just about like they are. Your pocket wall hanging is now complete. I hope you have as much fun making this as I did. I cannot wait to see what you come up with. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.